Hey, from downtown Houston, Jeff McNeil, Doug Davison of the Houston Herald, back with you to discuss what's in this week's newspaper. And Doug, the, the main topic in this week's newspaper is the sale of Oakwood Golf Club. It's been quite a journey for our community and it's finally ended. And I think of, of all the possible scenarios that could have played out, this might have been the very best one. Pretty much couldn't have ended any better. It's under private ownership, which I think everyone, almost everyone agrees is probably best. And uh, boy, you gotta give a lot of props to these people who are involved. Doug and Michelle Mosley, who bought the property and leased it to Doug and Tina Sutton, who uh, along with their son, Kobe, are gonna run it as a golf course. And then uh, Bud Evans, the uh, previous owner, who uh, basically sold it and still owns the golf carts right. and all the other equipment out there. And uh, boy, just, just a great scenario. Let's talk a little about this journey because it is has been a journey beginning last <laughs> December uh, when Bud announced he'd be selling the golf course and uh, put it up for purchase. And he had a few discussions with the city of Houston, held a, a public forum to discuss what the community and public thought about the golf course. I think it was pretty obvious that everyone wanted to keep it. Yes. It's just a matter of figuring out how to do that. Yes. And then the city council voted unanimously not to purchase it. And so that's kind of what led up to all this. And, you know, we, we have our own discussions in, in private here at the newspaper, but you know, now that it's all finished, I, I think you and I both agreed that it, it was best that the city not own it and that someone come in privately. And, and like we've just said, this is perfect. This is perfect. Um, I don't think anybody ever was against the golf course existing, <laughs> right? But I think there were a lot of people who really weren't keen on the idea of, uh, you know, city or public ownership. Um, so yeah, this, how could it possibly have worked out better? And let's, before we talk about the new owners, let's talk about the, the man that's stepping out away from the golf course, Bud Evans. And I know you spoke to him and relieved is probably the Ooh. right word for him right now that this has a happy ending because, you know, for a gentleman that spent so much time investing um, financially and, and of his time out there, he didn't want to see it go into no. to pasture land. No, oh man. he. He even said that he was just really down when it looked like it wasn't going to happen. Mm -hmm. But that is a man whose countenance had just <laughs> changed. You know, when I spoke right. to him last, he looked so relieved and so uh, at ease, you know. And now you can expect a lot of things from him in uh, the realm of classic cars. Right. He's not retiring, right? right? He's not. <laughs> it's on to the next thing. <laughs> That's a tease. We'll just tell you. The 2018 and, and classic cars and Bud Evans. There you go. That's a newspaper pro. Read more later yeah. in the Herald, right? Big time. Yeah. <laughs> well, on to our new owners, um, Doug and Tina Sutton. And uh, pretty exciting. You know, ownership changes uh, just kind of breathe sometimes some new life into things. And uh, I think the Suttons, I know them personally, and you've spent some time talking to them. I think they've got a lot of good ideas and, and you know I, I think this can be very positive for our community as well because you bring somebody in there that's got new ideas, um, new energy and yes. you know just get some things going maybe that, that we hadn't even thought about before. I, I think it's yes. going to be good. That's a Bud even said that. They're coming in with a uh, refreshed outlook, new ideas, lots of energy so yeah it can't can be nothing but good. Right, right. Well, something else in this week's newspaper, the boys' basketball team picked up a pair of wins this weekend in the Mansfield Invitational. Uh, started the year 0-3, shorthanded with some injuries, um, got a win on Friday night against Morrisville, then came back Saturday and beat Kabul in the consolation final. And, you know, Doug, consolation tournament championships are not, if you can call it a championship, I probably shouldn't call it a championship, a uh, consolation victory is not what we're shooting for. Uh, but I think when you step back and get a little perspective, uh, this is a nice step for this team because we can use all the positive momentum we can get at this point. You bet. It's something to build on. Right. Exactly. And so they'll keep building on that. So congratulations to the guys. Um, looking forward to some positive things. It's a young team. Um, so there's a, there's a lot to build on for this team. So uh, we'll see what all they can do and how they can build on that. They play this Friday night at home and we'll have that stream live for you online if you're interested in watching that. And another thing, Doug, uh, I guess it's a uh, firefighter talk round two <laughs> right now. Last week, um, it was kind of interesting. It might have been our, our most, um, the most feedback we've ever gotten from doing one of these as we talked about fire response times and, uh, you know, just the, the fact that we are where we are with volunteer fire departments and response times. Well, you wrote this week on another thought when it comes to volunteer fire departments. So why don't you tell me about that? One word, dues. <laughs> um, 
you know, it, it may not be an ideal situation that we have with regard to firefighting departments, but it is what we have. Um, and one of the most critical parts of that whole system is the dues that residents within each uh, fire department's boundaries um, pay voluntarily. It's not mandatory, but boy, are the dues critical to the operation of these outfits. Um, yeah, they do their own fundraising through fairs and poker runs and whatever it might be, and they can get grants for equipment and what have you. But uh, without the dues, um, it'd just be virtually impossible for the things to exist. Um, all the chiefs would say that and agree with that, and it's really, it's an important thing for members to consider. And it may only be 35 to 45 bucks a year, but as uh, one of the chiefs said, it's real cheap insurance. Right. You don't need it until you need it, right? That's exactly right. <laughs> um, you know, you're real glad when, when somebody does respond to your situation. And that's something that goes back to what we talked about last week with response times. Um, this is the situation that we have. Uh, we don't have a tax, nope. and so we're not paying for this. Nope. If we don't like it, uh, which we can decide if we don't like it or not, um, if we don't like it, then we need to have those discussions. We need to look at options for paying for this instead of having dues. But this is what we have, and the dues are incredibly important to make sure that they have the support and the equipment that they need because obviously they need all the tools that, that we can can muster for them so they can successfully fight as many fires as they can. Yeah, and do it as best as possible, you know. Um, if, if you really look at it, the amount of money they're asking on an annual basis isn't much for the potential return. Right. So the cheap insurance quote is, is a good one. All right, All right. Well, that's going to do it for this week. You can read about those things as well as we've got lots of Christmas photos from the parade, Christmas tree lighting, and other things in the newspaper. Got a few crime, there's always a crime story or two that's interesting. Got a very interesting one about a gentleman that almost ran over a county deputy. And so you can read about that in the newspaper as well. And I think that's going to do it. Doug, anything else? Nope, that'll do her. All right, thanks for joining us. Thank you.